The evening had settled into a comfortable silence, the kind that wraps around you like a well-loved quilt. I was in the kitchen, cleaning up after dinner, when Zoe, my ten-year-old niece, her face pale under the kitchen lights, whispered, "'Aunt Linda, the man in the garage is still breathing.' I froze, a glass halfway to the cupboard. "'What did you say, Zoe?' She bit her lip, eyes wide and serious. "'I saw him. He's in the garage. And he's—he's he's breathing.' The simplicity of her statement, the earnestness in her gaze, it sent a chill down my spine. How could my niece, a child with a vivid imagination but also a sense of truth, say such a thing? And yet, the image she painted was horrifyingly clear. Ethan, my husband of over two decades, had been growing distant. His mood swings like the unpredictable tides. I'd attributed it to stress at work, perhaps a midlife crisis clawing at his sense of worth. But Zoe's words painted a sinister picture, one I couldn't ignore. Stay here, I told her, my voice steadier than I felt. The garage was Ethan's domain, a place cluttered with tools and projects in various stages of completion. As I approached, the door seemed to loom before me, a barrier to a truth I wasn't sure I wanted to uncover. Inside, the dim light cast long shadows, transforming familiar objects into grotesque shapes. But there was no man, no stirring figure to validate Zoe's claim. Relief washed over me, mingled with confusion. What had Zoe seen? Was it a trick of the light, a child's imagination running wild? When Ethan came home later that night, his usual late return masked with the scent of cologne and a tired smile, I watched him closely. Zoe said she saw something strange in the garage, I ventured, watching for any flicker of guilt or panic. He laughed, a sound that once brought me comfort, but now seemed hollow. Kids and their imaginations, huh? Probably saw a shadow and thought it was a monster. But the way his gaze darted away, the slight tension in his shoulders, something wasn't right. That night, as Ethan's snores filled the quiet of our bedroom, I lay awake, Zoe's words echoing in my mind. My niece had never been one to make up stories, especially not one so disturbing. Determined to uncover the truth, I made a decision that would change everything. The next morning, before Ethan woke, I slipped a voice recorder into the pocket of his jacket. It was a desperate, perhaps foolish act, but I had to know if there was more to his late nights and evasive answers. As the day dragged on, my anxiety grew. What would the recorder capture? Was I prepared for the truth, whatever it might be? That evening, when Ethan returned, his usual nonchalance seemed forced. He didn't notice the recorder as he hung his jacket by the door, and my heart raced as I waited for the right moment to retrieve it. The house was quiet when I finally pressed play, my hands trembling. The first few minutes were filled with mundane sounds, the car engine, Ethan, humming tunelessly. But then, a voice, not Ethan's, sharp with anger. You promised me, Ethan. You said you'd leave her. Claire. The name slipped from his lips in a whisper of guilt and longing. My breath caught as their conversation unfolded, a sordid tale of lies and betrayal. They spoke of me as if I were a nuisance to be dealt with, their words cutting deeper than any knife. I sat in the dark, the recorder's cold plastic a lifeline to a reality I no longer recognized. Ethan, the man I'd built a life with, had chosen Claire, his mistress, over me. Their disdain for me, their plans, it was all laid bare. Tears blurred my vision, but a fierce determination took root within me. Ethan and Claire believed they could manipulate my life— discard me like an unwanted toy, but I wouldn't let them have the last word. This betrayal was the catalyst, the moment that transformed me from a passive observer in my own life to an avenger, determined to right the wrongs done to me. Ethan and Claire would learn, the hard way, that underestimating Linda Collins was their gravest mistake. The following days were a masterclass in restraint. I watched Ethan, memorizing his habits, his lies wrapped in half-truths, served with a smile that no longer reached his eyes. The house we shared felt like a stage, each of us playing our part in a tragic play. Marianne, my sister, noticed the change in me. Over coffee one morning, her concern was palpable. Linda, you've been... distant. Is everything okay? I debated telling her, exposing the raw, ugly truth, but hesitated. Instead, I forced a smile, the lie tasting bitter on my tongue. Just tired, that's all. Zoe, ever perceptive, watched me with eyes too wise for her age. She didn't ask questions, but her silent support was a balm to my frayed nerves. Ethan's facade began to crack. His phone was a constant companion, messages hidden the moment I entered the room. Work, 
he'd say, the excuse as flimsy as his fidelity. One evening as we sat across from each other at dinner, the silence between us heavy, I decided to probe. Ethan, is everything okay at work? You seem preoccupied. He paused, fork midway to his mouth, and then laughed, a sound devoid of humor. Preoccupied? Linda, darling, I'm fine, just the usual work stress. But you're home late so often now, and your phone, it's always buzzing. My voice was calm, but my heart raced. Ethan's smile didn't reach his eyes. Darling, you worry too much. Everything's under control. I nodded, letting the conversation die, but my mind raced. His dismissals, the ease with which he lied, it fueled my resolve. Days turned into weeks, each one a game of chess. Ethan moved with a confidence born of years of deceit, unaware I was two steps ahead. The voice recorder became my ally, each snippet of conversation a piece of the puzzle. Claire's voice, demanding and petulant, filled our living room late at night when Ethan thought I was asleep. I can't wait forever, Ethan. When are you leaving her? Claire's impatience was a sharp contrast to Ethan's attempts to placate her. Soon, Claire, I promise. We just need to be careful, plan it out. We can't rush this. Their words, their plans to erase me from my own life solidified my decision. Revenge wasn't just a desire, it was a necessity. Armed with evidence and a plan, I visited a lawyer, my steps determined. The office was sterile, the air thick with the scent of paper and ink. The lawyer, Mr. Jacobs, was a man of sharp eyes and a sharper mind. Linda, how can I help you today? His voice was gentle, but I heard the underlying steel. I laid out my case, the recordings, the betrayal. Mr. Jacobs listened, his expression unreadable. When I finished, he leaned back, his verdict heavy in the air. Linda, you have a strong case for divorce, and the evidence of infidelity strengthens your position. But are you sure about this? Divorce is a significant step. I met his gaze, my resolve unwavering. I've never been more certain of anything in my life. Ethan and his mistress can't get away with this. I want them to face the consequences of their actions. Mr. Jacobs nodded, understanding my need for justice. Very well. We'll begin the proceedings. Rest assured, Linda. I'll fight for you. As I left his office, a sense of empowerment enveloped me. The path was set, the pieces in motion. Ethan and Claire thought they were the architects of my downfall, but they were merely pawns in a game they didn't understand. The anticipation of confrontation was a fire within me. Ethan's betrayal had shattered the illusion of our marriage, but in its place, a new Linda was emerging, one who would not be underestimated or cast aside. I returned home, the plan clear in my mind. Ethan and Claire would soon learn the cost of their deception. The stage was set, and I was ready to take my revenge. The day I decided to confront Ethan, the house felt colder, the walls bearing witness to the crumbling facade of our marriage. Ethan walked in his usual late entrance, but tonight was different. Tonight I would shatter the silence. I waited in the living room, the voice recorder hidden in my pocket, a tangible reminder of his betrayal. Ethan, sensing a change in the air, hesitated at the threshold. Linda, what's... what's going on? His voice wavered, a crack in his usual confidence. I stood facing him squarely. We need to talk, Ethan, about us, about your late nights, and about Claire. Ethan paled, the mention of her name hitting its mark. Claire? I don't know what you're talking about, Linda. Don't insult my intelligence, Ethan. I know about the affair. I pulled out the voice recorder, pressing play. Claire's voice filled the room demanding, selfish. Ethan's face contorted, the mask of lies falling away. Linda, I... I can explain. Explain? Explain how you've lied to me, betrayed our marriage? Explain how you've made plans with her to leave me as if I'm nothing? My voice was steady, but inside, a storm raged. Ethan stumbled over his words, the truth a bitter pill. It's not like that, Linda. It was a mistake. Claire, she meant nothing. A mistake? She meant nothing. I echoed, disbelief and anger swirling. You don't get to diminish what you've done. You chose her, Ethan. He reached out, a futile attempt at reconciliation. Linda, please, we can fix this. I love you, not her. I stepped back, repulsed by the touch of a man I no longer recognized. Love, your actions speak louder than your words, Ethan. You've made your choice, and now you'll live with the consequences. Ethan's desperation was palpable. Linda, I'm sorry. Truly, I am. Can't we just forget this happened? I'll end it with Claire. We can start over. Forget? Start over? I laughed, a sound devoid of humor. You expect me to just forgive and forget? After you've planned to leave me for her? 
No, Ethan. It's too late for apologies. I've spoken to a lawyer. I'm filing for divorce. The color drained from Ethan's face, the reality of his situation finally hitting him. Divorce? But Linda, think about what you're saying. We can work through this. There's no we anymore, Ethan. You destroyed that when you chose her over our marriage. The only thing left to discuss is the divorce settlement. Ethan sank into a chair, defeated, the weight of his choices bearing down on him. Linda, please, is there no chance for us? I looked at the man I had loved, now a stranger to me. The only thing you're leaving this marriage with is your guilt. As for me, I'm taking back my life, my dignity. You and Claire, you deserve each other. Turning my back on Ethan, I left the room, the finality of our conversation marking the end of our marriage. In that moment, I wasn't just walking away from Ethan. I was walking towards a new beginning, free from lies and betrayal. The next steps would be challenging, navigating the divorce and rebuilding my life. But as I stood in the doorway, looking back at the man who had been my husband, I felt a surge of strength. Ethan and Claire had thought they could manipulate me, but they had underestimated my resolve. The drama of my shattered marriage was giving way to a tale of revenge and empowerment. Ethan had sown the seeds of his own downfall, and now he would reap the whirlwind. As for Claire, she would soon learn the price of coveting what wasn't hers. In the silence of the night, I made a vow to myself. No longer would I be the victim. It was time for Linda Collins to take control of her story, to write the next chapter on her own terms. The days following my declaration of divorce were a mix of cold civility and underlying tension. Ethan had moved into the guest room, a symbolic gesture of our broken union. He oscillated between pleading for reconciliation and silent resentment, a dance I no longer cared to participate in. One afternoon, as I was sorting through years of joint memories, deciding what to keep and what to discard, Ethan approached me, his demeanor one of forced casualness. Linda, have you... have you thought more about what I said? About us trying again? I didn't look up from the task at hand, my voice steady. There's nothing left to consider, Ethan. My decision is final. Ethan's frustration bubbled to the surface. But Linda, can't you see I'm trying here? I've ended things with Claire. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Placing a photo album aside, I finally met his gaze. Ethan, it's too late. You've done irreparable damage. There's no going back from this. His attempt to maintain a facade of contrition crumbled, revealing a glimpse of his true feelings. So, that's it then. You're just going to throw away over 20 years of marriage because of one mistake? One mistake? I echoed, incredulous. You call an affair a mistake? No, Ethan. What you did was a choice, and now I'm making mine. Ethan's anger flared, a stark contrast to his previous pleas. You're being unreasonable, Linda. You're letting your pride ruin everything. My pride, I stood facing him squarely. No, Ethan, it's my self-respect that you seem to have a problem with. I won't be manipulated or guilted into staying in a marriage that's lost all trust. Ethan opened his mouth to retort but seemed to think better of it, turning away with a muttered curse. The following week brought an unexpected confrontation. Claire, emboldened by desperation or perhaps delusion, appeared at my doorstep. Her appearance was the first face-to-face -face encounter since the revelation of the affair. Linda, we need to talk, she stated, her tone demanding entrance. I blocked the doorway, my posture unyielding. There's nothing to discuss, Claire. You've said enough. Claire's composure slipped, revealing the selfishness beneath. You're making a mistake, Linda. Ethan loves me. You're just standing in the way of our happiness. The audacity of her words ignited a fire within me. Your happiness? At the expense of my marriage and my life? You're delusional if you think I'll step aside for a homewrecker. Her face reddened, anger and entitlement warring for dominance. I love him, and he loves me. You're just a bitter old woman who can't let go. Let go? I laughed, a sound devoid of amusement. Claire, I'm not holding on to Ethan. I'm freeing myself from a liar and a cheat. And as for you, you're welcome to him. But know this, the man who cheats with you will cheat on you. Claire faltered, her bravado crumbling. You'll regret this, Linda. Ethan will never be happy with you. I stepped closer, my voice a whisper of resolve. He's your problem now, Claire. But remember, when he lies to you, when he betrays you, you'll have only yourself to blame. Turning on her heel, Claire stormed off 
her departure marked by a slammed car door and the screech of tires. Watching her leave, I felt a sense of closure. The confrontation was a catalyst, propelling me further away from the life I had known with Ethan and closer to the future I was determined to build for myself. The path ahead was uncertain, fraught with legal battles and emotional turmoil, but I was ready. Ethan and Claire's selfishness had shattered my world, but in its place, I was building something stronger, something purely mine. The drama of betrayal was giving way to a tale of resilience and rebirth. My story was far from over. In fact, a new chapter was just beginning. The legal proceedings of our divorce began to unfold with a rhythm dictated by paperwork and court dates, a dance I never wished to learn. Ethan's attitude shifted from contrition to hostility as he realized I was serious about going through with the divorce. Our interactions, limited to necessary exchanges, were charged with the tension of a truce on the verge of breaking. It was during one of these exchanges as we met to discuss the division of assets with our lawyers present that Ethan's facade of cooperation crumbled entirely. Linda, this is absurd. You're taking everything. What about me? What about my rights? Ethan's voice rose, laced with indignation and disbelief. I remained calm, my lawyer's presence a stabilizing force. Ethan, I'm not taking everything. We're dividing assets as per the law. You made your choices, and now there are consequences. Ethan scoffed, turning to his lawyer in a display of frustration. This is what I get for years of marriage? She's stripping me of everything over a mistake? His lawyer, a man of patience worn thin, tried to interject. Ethan, we've gone over this. The terms are fair, considering the circumstances. But Ethan wasn't listening. His gaze fixed on me. He spat. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Ruining my life, taking everything we built together. I met his gaze squarely, my voice steady. I'm not ruining your life, Ethan. You did that on your own, and I'm not taking anything that isn't rightfully mine. You seem to forget the part you played in this. The back and forth continued, with Ethan's lawyer attempting to mediate, but Ethan's bitterness permeated the room. It was clear he saw himself as the victim, unwilling to acknowledge the pain and betrayal his actions had caused. As the meeting concluded, with little progress made, Ethan's parting words were a mix of threat and plea. You'll regret this, Linda. You can't just erase me from your life. But I was resolute, bolstered by the support of my lawyer and the knowledge that I was fighting not just for my assets, but for my dignity and future. The following weeks were a testament to my resolve. I poured my energy into my work and began reconnecting with friends I'd neglected, rebuilding the life Ethan had tried to overshadow. The loneliness that crept in during quiet moments was a stark reminder of the cost of freedom, but I was learning to embrace it as a necessary part of healing. It was during this time of tentative rebuilding that I received a call from Marianne, her voice tight with concern. Linda, have you heard? About Ethan? I braced myself, unsure of what news my sister could bring that involved Ethan. No, what happened? He's been fired, she revealed, the words heavy with implication. His affair with Claire... It wasn't just a secret from us. He was her superior at work. The company found out, and, well, they didn't take it lightly. The news was a shock, yet part of me felt an inevitable justice in the outcome. Ethan's recklessness had finally caught up with him, his professional life now as fractured as his personal one. "'Are you okay?' Marianne asked, her concern palpable even over the phone. I paused, considering her question. "'I'm relieved, in a way.' It's another confirmation that I made the right decision. Ethan's choices have consequences, and it's time he faced them. The conversation with Marianne ended on a note of sisterly support, but as I hung up, I couldn't help but reflect on the twisted path of retribution Ethan and Claire had found themselves on. Their actions had woven a web of consequences that extended far beyond our failed marriage. As the divorce proceedings continued, with each step forward feeling like a battle won, I realized that the greatest revenge was not in the suffering of Ethan, but in the life I was building from the ashes of his betrayal. My resurgence was a testament to my strength, a narrative of triumph over the deception that had sought to define me. The final divorce settlement meeting was set in a stark, impersonal conference room, the kind of place where futures were dismantled and divided like mere business transactions. Ethan was already there when I arrived, 
his posture rigid, the lines of defeat etched deeply into his face. As we sat down at the table, flanked by our lawyers, the air was thick with unspoken words and the ghosts of a shared past. The lawyer began to outline the terms of the settlement, a fair division of assets that leaned in my favor, acknowledging the imbalance Ethan's actions had caused. Ethan, simmering with a mix of resentment and resignation, finally spoke, his voice laced with bitterness. So this is it, then? You take everything? Leave me with nothing? I looked at him, really looked at him, seeing the man I had once loved, reduced to this shell of self-pity and blame. Ethan, you're not being left with nothing. But actions have consequences. We both know you brought this on yourself. His laugh was hollow, devoid of humor. And what about you, Linda? You come out of this smelling like roses, the wronged wife, while my life is in shambles. It didn't have to be this way, Ethan. You made choices. You lied. You cheated. You destroyed our marriage. Not me. I'm just picking up the pieces of my life, I replied, my voice steady despite the turmoil inside. The lawyer, sensing the escalating tension, interjected, Let's focus on finalizing the agreement. Are there any objections to the terms as they stand? Ethan glanced at his lawyer, a silent communication passing between them. Then, with a resigned sigh, he shook his head. No. No objections. As signatures were applied to paper, formalizing the end of our marriage, Ethan's mask of indifference slipped, revealing a flash of the man I had once known, filled with regret and loss. Linda, I, he started, his voice trailing off, the weight of his remorse palpable. But it was too late for apologies, too late for what-ifs. Our story had ended, the final chapter written in the sterile language of legal documents. After the meeting, as I walked to my car, the sense of closure was bittersweet. I had fought for this moment, for my freedom from a marriage poisoned by betrayal. Yet the victory was hollow, the cost measured in years of love and trust, now irretrievably lost. The days that followed were a mixture of relief and reflection. The divorce was final, the battle won, but the war had taken its toll. I threw myself into work, into rebuilding a life that was wholly mine, yet the shadow of my failed marriage lingered, a reminder of the fragility of happiness. It was during this time of transition that I received an unexpected call from Claire. Her voice, when she spoke, was a far cry from the confident homewrecker I had confronted months ago. Linda, I... I don't expect you to care, but I thought you should know. Ethan's... He's gone, left town, left me, Claire confessed, her voice breaking. I paused, absorbing her words, the schadenfreude I had anticipated feeling nowhere to be found. Instead, there was only a profound sadness for all that had been lost. Claire, I'm sorry. For all of it, I said, surprising myself with the sincerity of my words. You're sorry? After everything? Claire's confusion was evident. Yes, because in the end, we were both victims of Ethan's selfishness. I hope you find a way to move on from this, Claire. I hope we both do, I replied, ending the call with a sense of finality. The conversation with Claire was a turning point, a moment of unexpected grace amid the wreckage of our intertwined lives. It was a reminder that the best form of revenge wasn't the suffering of those who had wronged us, but the ability to rise above, to heal, and to find peace. As I looked ahead to the future, I realized that my journey was just beginning. The end of my marriage to Ethan was not just an ending, but a gateway to new beginnings, to possibilities unencumbered by the past. I had emerged from the storm stronger, wiser, and ready to face whatever came next, with a heart open to the promise of tomorrow.